Hey everyone, so Adobe has stepped into the AI image generation game and released Firefly, which they are billing as an ethical AI image generator. But there is a problem with that and we're gonna dig into why. But first, let's take a quick overview of Firefly, uh, discuss what its strengths are, where it falters, the problem with its ethics, and then ultimately where I think all of this is headed, which is actually more problematic. Okay, so in Firefly, we have a handful of modules. Uh, the text to image module, our typical AI image generation. Text effects, which I actually think is pretty interesting considering how terrible uh, AI image generators are at text. Those were the two that were available to me. I have seen some other people that have had access to modules that are in exploration for me uh, that have in painting, I guess you can train images, some text to vector stuff. Uh, out painting. So I'm not doing a full review here. I know that there are other videos out there that have spent like a half an hour delving into, you know, each individual element. That's not what this is. Uh, I just kind of want to give you a quick overview. So where I think that Firefly does pretty well is generating sort of like stock imagey photos. For example, this was a prompt that I ran in Mid Journey, which is a stunning mountain range next to a tropical island, sunset as a storm is brewing off the ocean. This was for a joke that I made on Twitter when V5 first came out, where I said that I wanted to vacation in V5. Getting the same results into Firefly gets us these results, which look pretty good. I do like that you can change the aspect ratios via this pull down and it'll automatically regenerate for you. So that's pretty cool. And for the most part, generation does happen very quickly. Additionally, you can change the lighting via this tab, although there really isn't much that you can do with this particular image, considering like I, if I hit golden hour, it, it already is in golden hour, so it's not gonna really do too much. As we can see, yep, still golden hour. Further, you have some more controls on the side for, I guess, ease of prompting. For example, this prompt is a dad relaxing at home. Uh, it rolls up these four images. I think this dude has like a, does he have like an earbud in there? That's interesting, huh? So for example, this is photo. If I hit graphic here, it changes to this. Now, just to be clear, I had actually already pre-rolled this. It does not actually generate that quickly. Um, let's try art, which, yeah. So art I didn't do. Let's take a look at how quickly it generates here. I just wanna show that. It's it's quick though. I, I, I hate filling these things up with dead air. Like, there it goes, okay. So not bad. Um, actually, are these the same? It's a relatively, yeah. So it's almost like it's, adding a style. So I guess it's just popping a style layer on top of the base photographic image. Additionally, you have this composition drop down down here where you can change the angle of your shot. Um, I actually haven't really found that this does much. So this is a businesswoman walking down the street with wide angle. So let's turn that into a close up, which pretty much looks like the same image. So it's sometimes broken, like this is shot from above where it does work. So this composition tab, you may or may not get results out of. So I've mostly stuck to fairly benign prompts and there's a reason for that. And that's because that's what I think that Firefly does pretty well. It does lack a lot of imagination. For example, in Mid Journey, when you ask for a cyberpunk samurai, you get images like this, which is an example that we used in a previous video. Whereas in Firefly, you get images like this, which look, I'm not saying is awful or bad or anything, but yeah, I mean, it's not quite up to snuff, right? So text effects are actually super cool. Uh, that's something that, you know, Mid Journey really can't do that well. Anytime that you try to spell a word in Mid Journey, it's just gonna end up yeah, just pretty garbled, but this does work pretty well. Uh, for example, I've been meaning to update the channel header so you can either prompt for the texture effects. For example, this is rusted chrome or there's a series of presets over here. Uh, let's, let's just try out wires. And it looks like you actually have more options on texture styles down here. So yeah, very cool. Very briefly, I am trying to grow and expand the channel. So if you're enjoying the video thus far, or just really looking forward to the Adobe bashing that's about to happen, um, please do take a minute to hit the like and subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Okay, let's get into the problem part. Now, a lot has been made about the ethics of Adobe Firefly. That seems to be a narrative that they're very much pushing and, you know, a selling point towards the service. Don't wanna to delve too deeply into the topic other than to say, as an artist on the one side, I get it. And as an AI enthusiast on the other side, I get it. I mean, I do have this channel after all. But honestly, never trust a corporation's claims of being ethical. And I get it because a large part of Adobe's user base is either anti-AI or fearful that AI is going to completely destroy their income. So they've made a big deal out of the fact that Firefly has been trained off of images in Adobe stock. Problem is that there are mid-journey images in that database. Uh, I know because I've uploaded some. And just as an FYI, you remember like a month or two ago when there were like a hundred videos on, I'm uploading mid-journey images to Adobe stock and I'm making hundreds of dollars a day. Yeah, that's not true. 
what actually happened was that there was like this rush of people uploading stuff to Adobe stock and the verification system got completely overloaded. So it was taking up to a month before anything actually got through. I was actually surprised because I just logged in and found out that I've made 33 cents so far. So um, yeah, you know, it's a far cry from hundreds of dollars a day, but eh, 33 cents, whatever, I'll take it. Um, I will go buy a stick of gum. Going back to topic, Adobe has started requiring contributors to disclose and tag their images as AI generated, but that wasn't always the case. And I know for a fact that people are continuing to upload AI generated images without disclosing so. So no matter what, the Firefly database is already compromised. And while that might not be Adobe's fault, it is a bit like claiming chicken nuggets are 100% chicken meat. Uh, they're still delicious, but I'm under no illusion that it's 100% meat. But the larger question is what is Adobe's end goal for Firefly going to be? We already know that it's gonna be rolled into the Adobe line and you know I can see a lot of potential in Photoshop, for example, by masking one model out and swapping it out for an AI generated one. Problem is once Adobe Firefly is up to snuff, what happens to Adobe stock? I think that most of you know that if you're doing the full-time artist gig, it's important to diversify your income streams as much as possible. And, you know, while I don't think anybody's rolling in cash from Adobe stock, you know, that additional 50 bucks every couple of months, you know, it adds up. I mean, money is money, even 33 cents. Now that Adobe has Firefly, uh, any income that was generated off of Adobe stock now goes right back into Adobe's pocket. And Adobe being Adobe, you know, it's pretty likely that we're gonna end up paying a surcharge for it as well. And hey, I'm not trying to bash Adobe here. They do that well enough on their own. All I'm saying is that anytime a corporation says, trust me, chances are they're the scorpion and you're the frog. So yesterday I released a video about my daughter having an AI nightmare. It was not sort of the typical type of video for this kind of channel. Like it wasn't a prompt tutorial or I wasn't looking at, you know, cool video technology. I thought it was a pretty good video. And even if you don't have kids or if they're already grown up, I, I think it's a pretty worthy watch. So it's coming up next. So I do hope you check it out. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Tim.